Hi, I'm John Dean. I'm a speech language pathologist specializing in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Today, I'm going to talk about some of the communication problems associated with this disorder. For those of you dealing with Parkinson's disease, you know that the quiet voicing is often the largest component of the difficulties with talking with your friends and your family and people you see in public. If you've ever been out at a restaurant and had people struggling to hear you, maybe asking you to repeat yourself or maybe even leaning in a little bit, you know what I'm talking about. So today I'm going to talk about the two largest components associated with producing good voicing and good communication, and that's going to be breath and voice production. And we're going to work on those together to give you a better speaking voice and make it easier to communicate with your friends and family. I'd like to begin with the breath. Uh, proper breath support is critical for proper voice production, and if you don't use enough air, you're never going to get enough sound. You won't be able to fix it later on. So we're going to do some exercises today to maybe help you get stronger with your breath and maybe also improve some of the other elements like the posture and the, the actual voice production. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with a nice upright position. I like to have my, my knees open a little bit in a B position. I don't want to be straight forward on the floor. I want a little more stability. I'm going to put my hands on my knees. This is how I power up. And that helps me push a little bit, so actually I'm making my posture more upright. I have a little triangle of stability here with my hands on my knees and my shoulder and my waist. Okay, so let's just get in that position a little bit and breathe. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Looks good. Now I want you to take a nice deep breath. Really try to push. Ready? Okay, is that the best you can do? Try one more time. Big, big, big breath. Okay, so when you're breathing, what's going to happen is the diaphragm is going to fire and open up sp space so that the lungs can expand. And at the same time, the ribs are going to kind of come out and up a little bit, and that gives you even more room. And when I'm working with people or I see them in a class, I usually see people really focused on the diaphragmatic part of the breathing, but not as much on the ribs. So we're going to practice that a little bit. We're going to go ahead and do just belly breathing by itself so you can see what that feels like. Okay, so you're going to put your hands on your ribs, nice and gentle, and your belly's going to be going, but you're trying to keep your ribs from moving at all. Okay, here we go. Ready? In through your nose. And again. It's kind of hard to get enough air that way, isn't it? Okay, now let's flip it around and you're going to put just your thumbs on the top of your ribs and the rest of your fingers on your belly and just feel your ribs moving and you're going to try to hold your belly in. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that's pretty impossible, isn't it? You're never going to get enough air that way. Okay, so now when you combine them, however, you're really going to have a whole lot more air and it's going to be a lot less effort. So let's get in a nice upright position with your hands on your knees and you're powered up. And this time, when you breathe, I really want you to focus on having the diaphragm fire and the ribs open up. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and use this position while we're doing it. So start with your hands on your knees. You're going to take a nice big breath. And again. One more time. Much better, isn't it? Much more efficient. So now I want to add just a little bit of resistance to see if we can't get you to, uh, to push a little harder and maybe strengthen the diaphragm up. So we'll get in that nice upright position, your hands on your knees, and we're going to breathe in through your nose, out through pursed lips. It's going to be like we're blowing a candle out, but you're blowing a candle out from across the room. Okay, so here we go. Power up. Try that again. If you're doing it right, the diaphragm should quiver a little bit. It should tremble because you're actually pulling on it and making it work. Try it one more time. Okay. Now to add a little more resistance, I might have a sound. So I'm going to do a shh, like you're shushing someone at the library. Okay. So you're going to go powered up 
in through your nose, out with a shush. So power up. Really work it. You're pushing all the air out as fast and as hard as you can. Okay. Now, if I wanted to add a little more resistance, I'll go to an S sound. An S like you're saying, like a S, like a snake. Okay? Same situation. Power up, big breath, and then an S sound. Really hard. Here we go. Again. That's good. Now, any one of these, you can just do a set of five. I like to do five sets of five, and that's basically a breath exercise. Okay, and you can do that throughout the day, anytime you want to work on strengthening those muscles.